Please note that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like and share. Hello everyone and welcome back to another live stream with me, Gizzle K. This is Grizzly True Crime and today we're going to be looking at another case. This one out of Romeoville in Illinois, Chicago. So we'll be looking at that. I really hope it helps raise awareness and that if anyone knows anything that they will contact the police and offer up some information. G. McGee. <laughs> Thank you so much for your sticker. I really appreciate it. Welcome to all my moderators. Thank you so much for everything you do. Welcome to all my patrons and all my members as well. And then all the existing subscribers, OGs, original Grizzlies, as well as all the new subscribers. Some might subscribe today. Also the lurkers, you know, if you're thinking about it, maybe you'll subscribe as well and be part of this fantastic community. So welcome. It's great to see you again. Uh, we will continue with the conversation in the Delphi case. There's a lot to talk about there, a lot of a lot of things to process and think about. And uh, so we'll continue doing that. Don't worry. Make sure you are subscribed. Hit the bell. Set it to all so you don't miss out when I next upload a video for you. Maybe a bit of a trial summary from one we've been following, or you know, if it's a Delphi live stream or any of these cases that pop up. Because unfortunately, true crime never sleeps. There's always something happening, right? Okay, so I've got a presentation for you today. Um, I'm just quickly actually going to show you the map just so that you could see what area we're looking at today. So this is Chicago. I've actually been there and I really liked it. So hello to everyone. There we go. Kelly's from Chicago. Kelly says joining from Chicago suburbs. Hello to you. Welcome to all the locals. So um, I haven't made the map too big. Hold on. We can make it a little bit bigger like this so that you can see properly. Let's zoom out just for this is an international audience. So I'll make sure that everybody could just see kind of orientate yourself. I'm sure you know New York, no matter where you are from in the world, right on the East Coast over here, Massachusetts. And then if you go westward, we're going to this area here, which is actually called Romeoville in Illinois, Chicago, Illinois. And so this family used to live in Westmont and they recently moved to this area on the 500 block of Concord Avenue in Romeoville. And we shall also, I'll just say um, that one of the parents worked in Aurora. I think it was the dad. We're going to go over the presentation now. And then in Lombard is where his wife worked. So very very sad case very scary as well because of course it means there is a killer on the loose even though the police have said that this is a targeted attack it's a targeted attack they don't believe anyone else is in danger but if somebody is able to and we're going to get into the details murder a family of four a mother a father two young children and three dogs well what kind of person is that and what would their motive be like, why would someone do that? Okay, so I have a presentation for you, as always. <laughs> I love making these for you. So let's get into it. Let me just move myself to the side here. I hope you can see nicely as well. So this beautiful Puerto Rican family of four recently, and that means in April of 2023, moved to Romeoville, Illinois. It's about 30 miles southwest of Chicago. You just saw it on the map as well. They said there's about 40,000 people who live there, and it's actually not. Um, Lukiva says, is Romeoville a dangerous area? If anyone's local, let us know. But from everything I've researched and read, they actually said it's a very quiet, quaint, happy neighborhood. It's not a very dangerous neighborhood. Things like this don't generally happen there, and the neighbors are very distraught terrified, upset, and also none of them heard gunshots in this area. Rachel Boys, thank you so much, all the way from New Zealand. <laughs> thank you for your New Zealand dollars, $3 super sticker, really, really appreciated. Okay, and so they were a happy family with three dogs. I haven't been able to find any pictures of the dogs. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm a huge animal lover as well. So when you hear a mother, a father, two little boys, age seven and nine, being murdered, and then also the three dogs are just, 
it just adds that extra layer of like what i mean really what kind of psycho are we dealing with here this is really terrible um i'm torn between you know is it like revenge is it someone that maybe and i'm gonna give you all the victims names now as well just so that you know um but is it like like someone that that the dad works with or that i don't know i don't know or i'm like is it a stalker because i've uh, learned a lot about stalking and harassment and how far that can go sometimes we've seen a recent case as well i can't remember the names unfortunately of that case but where somebody stalked a lady and shot her and her husband so you just never know sometimes stalkers can be well oftentimes very very dangerous so we just but we're not sure the police are not sharing who they think this is they say it's still early days in the investigation we are going to look at the press conferences as well that they've had they're very short they're like three minute clips you know mary said i grew up in lombard lilac capital of the world very nice thank you so much mary i really appreciate it but what a beautiful family you know that moved to United, to the united states i'm not sure exactly when they arrived but they wanted to study make a new life for themselves make a wonderful life for their kids as well um they had filed for bankruptcy in 2019 but it was for all student loans you know we're going to go over that as well but they were doing their very best right so they say um they were a happy family with three dogs, described by neighbors as quiet and polite. They had previously lived in Westmont, Illinois for about five years, and they recently moved here, which is where my mind starts going. I don't know. This is all just speculation. I'm just like, I wonder like, why they moved. Was it a new job or what? Because that could also be a reason. If there was, for example, a stalker problem or something, then of course, and you'd be like, okay, I think we need to move somewhere else. I mean, because the police also say things like, we are not actively looking for someone in the area. And I'm like, well, then where? Where are you looking? But they do want ring cam footage and they do need the public's help in this case. So I'm going to give you all the numbers to call and everything as well. So Fun and Funky said, hi, G, welcome back from your Icelandic adventure. I hope you're enjoying himself too. He did as well. He's sitting here very quietly with me on the armchair. So he's here with us, you guys. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, nice to see you, Ryan, as well. So, uh, this is a picture of the house as well, in case you were wondering. It's not just a random house. It's a, this is the picture of the family and of their beautiful home that they had made for themselves. The couple were apparently married. I say it like that because you'll hear in the first press conference they were saying they're not sure if they were married or not. You know, it was still very early days in this investigation. But from everything I've researched online, they say they were married. They had filed for bankruptcy in 2019. Um, Alberto worked for a spirits, wine, and beer distributor in Aurora, and his wife worked in quality control for a manufacturing plant in Lombard. In 2019, the couple said on their bankruptcy filing that they did not own any firearms. So maybe they own one now, we don't know. But if they still didn't own any, then of course, you know, you can then, we can't rule anything out. Because we don't know. I'm just saying if there were no firearms in the house, that somebody obviously brought it along. And they must have had a silencer because nobody heard anything. And that's a lot of gunshots. There's a mom, a dad, two children, and three dogs. Right? And I don't know if they shot at them once or multiple times either. That we're not sure of. So, Oz Art said it's interesting to know that they just recently moved into that neighborhood. So, their previous life is of most importance crime followed in their paths this is what i'm wondering as well you know who knew them where where they lived before which was in westmont and so they said majority of their debt was actually from student loans because you know they'd been working hard uh, for to make the best life for themselves and for their children um, a neighbor said like a close-knit family as far as i could tell and they just stay to themselves they had outings in their backyard a lot of times with just family and both of them worked she worked days and he worked nights so they just crossed paths on the way so that's how neighbors uh, describe them sasha mclean thank you for being a member for 20 months oh my goodness thank you so much i really appreciate it Okay, Geo uh, Coupe or Coop says previous homeowner too. Interesting. So, yes, AP, they killed three dogs as well. A mom, a dad, two little boys, age seven and nine, and three dogs. I mean, that's just next level sick. I, I don't know. I don't, I'm speechless when I read this. So, they, they say this happened between, so from Saturday, September 16th, between 9 p.m. on that Saturday 
and 5 a.m. on Sunday morning, September 17th. So if you live in the area, this is the 500 block of Concord Avenue. And you have any ring cam footage to review, please review it. You just never know what you could see. That is what the police are asking help with. If you have any dash cam footage, ring cam footage, you know, if you were filming a TikTok and you <laughs> it was pointing outside the window or something, you just never know. You never know. Teresa said, love this channel. Thank you for being a member for 10 months, Teresa. So they say between 9 p.m. right and 5 a.m. from Saturday, September 16th to Sunday, September 17th. On Sunday, September 17th, 2023, 38-year-old Alberto Rolon did not show up for work. His shift started at 6 a.m. Relatives who were in regular contact with him could not get hold of them or, or him or his wife, Zareda, which they found very unusual. One family member decided to call the police for a well-being check at their home at approximately 8.43 p.m. on that Sunday, which was on the 500 block of Concord Avenue in the quiet neighborhood of Romeoville in Illinois. Neighbors had not heard anything. When the police entered the home, they found all four family members and their three dogs deceased. They had all been shot. Police were able to rule out the possibility of, I hope you can read it because it's YouTube trigger words, murder and unaliving. Um, so, and they said they believe that this attack was targeted. Yes. So, um, obviously, initially people thought, well, could this be one of those cases, you know, especially because they initially talked about the bankruptcy, like was there a lot of financial strain and maybe somebody decided that's it for the whole family and they're going to take themselves out. But no, police have ruled that out. They said it's not a murder suicide. Okay. And they believe this is a targeted attack. So these are the victims, Alberto Rolon. You'll hear in the first press conference clip, um, the police officer says, Roberto, and he also spells out Roberto, but later they clarify it's Alberto. It's also in all the articles, it's Alberto Rolon. If the family is watching, please know this is a very safe space. This community is extremely empathic and supportive, and I hope that you feel, you know, that we've got your back, and I really hope that they will find whoever did this soon, and that there will be justice in this case. Chrissy P, <laughs> you say, proud to be a grizzly. Thank you so much, Chrissy P. So, Alberto Rolon, 38 years old. Zoraida Bartolome, 32 years old. And their two sons, aged seven and nine, and three dogs. The investigation is still in its early stages. If you know anything, please contact the Romeoville Police at 815 886 seven two one nine thank you cindy for being a member for five months jason gibbs said press conference today i have not seen that there's a press conference today if you've seen something like that please send it to me on email um i haven't seen any such notification but i do have the two press briefings that they have already done so we're going to be looking at that today i mean look at what a beautiful family oh man this is so sad so I'm just showing you some pictures here because they've taken out a whole lot of things from the home as well, collected a lot of evidence. Um, they're keeping a lot of details close to the vest. But I just wanted to show you some photographs that you can actually just see all the activity here as well. Okay. So they say the, the police believe that the shooting happened inside the home. So they say check your ring cams uh, between 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. That would be September 16th to 17th. 9 p.m. Saturday night, sometime between 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. They do not believe that the offender is one of the victims, so not a murder-suicide. They believe this was a targeted attack. They are not releasing much information, so we do not know if there were any signs of a break-in, but I'm going to show you a picture after this where they're literally carrying out a door. They literally, like, unhook the door and they carried the whole door out, so... That is interesting as well. Azure Avocado said multiple shooters. Very interesting theory as well. I mean, it could be. Could be. Just never know. Um, they said, uh, we are not asking people to shelter in place. And we are not actively looking for anybody in the area. 
that really makes me wonder when they said that. I was like, what? I'm going to write that down. I'm going to listen to it now. I'm just writing it so that this is layer one <laughs> for your visual learning experience, for your memory. And then we're going to watch the press conference. It'll be like hearing it the second time. I don't know if you guys know, but they say in psychology, people really only hear you the seventh time. So we're, you're going to hear it here. Then we're going to hear in the press conference. We'll discuss it a little bit more. I hope that you hear all about this case loud and clear and can like and share this you can use the hashtag Romeoville is what I see it's being used on social media or Romeoville family it's always difficult when there's so many victims to hashtag it on social media but Romeoville and Romeoville family is um, how it's being categorized right now cake okay, lady post says I'm late as usual hello fellow grizzlies I haven't heard of this case until now we'll definitely be re-watching after the live is over thank you so much for re-watching as well see then you're going to hear it another time <laughs> that's good so they said uh, this is a homicide investigation. The Will County Major Crimes Task Force has been brought in to assist investigators with gathering evidence and reviewing video. Officials at the FBI, the ATF and the DEA all say that they've not been contacted. I'm going to say yet. OK, they've not been contacted by Romeoville to join this murder investigation. Federal drug investigators would typically be called in if there were signs of a drug cartel's involvement and they haven't been called in. So I guess this I got from an article and I guess they said that also because people had questions of like, what if, what if it's a cartel? Um, Janet Murphy said it sounds like a professional hit. We always got to ask ourselves, what is the motive? Which is why when I sat and pondered about this case from everything I read, what would the motive be? To me, it would be either revenge, rejection or obsession, like stalking, right? which goes with the rejection as well. Something like that. I don't know, but we shall see, and I'll be keeping a close uh, eye on this case as well. Yeah, Candy says, wait, they're not actively looking for the shoot in the area? That doesn't seem right. That was interesting, right? It's almost like a little slip of like, we are not, <laughs> you'll hear it yourself. Said, we are not asking people to shelter in place. We're not actively looking for anybody in the area. So where are they looking? Where did the person come from then? You know, did they see license plates from somewhere else or do they know that maybe from the air, that they're from the area where they lived before, which was in Westmont or, you know, are they from where? I don't know. We shall see. There's actually, it's very scary to think, like, think of Rachel Morin's case, how that killer is just on the loose. We don't know who he is. And here again, it's another case like that where it's like, oh man, like, who is this? Who would do this? Who would shoot? A husband, a wife, two little boys and three dogs. Like... Wow. Sin City Gill says revenge stalking. Yeah, that's what I'm leaning towards as well. We shall see. So they said, um, okay, we, I think we've read through all of this. Next slide, next slide. <laughs> and then we will look at the clips. So here's a picture of all the crime scene tape, of course, and then that literally the whole door is going with. I don't know if some of the windows are knocked out or not. Are they? Looks like a little bit, but I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. But they're taking that whole door with them. So I don't know what kind of evidence would be on there. You know, very interesting. Um, Alyssa said uh, they did get that house. Family said they were very excited about it. Oh, man, that's so sad. They've moved into this house in April of 2023. So they haven't been there for very long. Wow. I don't know if anything was stolen. They're not releasing too many details, as I say. You know, keeping a lot of details close to the vest, um, which is for the investigation's sake, of course. So, yep, there goes there goes the whole door that they're taking as part of their evidence collection. And here they're looking outside. Might be for nothing. Might be for something. They've got little torches. They've got cameras. They've got all sorts of things there. So, again... <laughs> And I'm not trying to actually get us all on one school of thought. I'm always very careful, you know, with what I share. I'm just wondering, the tree and the little rocks and everything, would, do they think someone stood there and watched the house for a while or something? You just never know. You never know. Um, okay, and so the number again is 815-886-7219. If you know anything, if you saw anything, please say something. Don't be scared. You can also submit tips, um, usually anonymously. They didn't specify that this time, but usually, yes. Um, so Carly, Carly with an eye says, I live about 20 minutes from Romeoville. I'm so sorry, you know, that this happened in your neighborhood. And to all the locals in chat as well. Gabriela Cruz, thank you so much for your sticker. I really appreciate that. 
Flufflebun, <laughs> that's a cool name, you say surveillance, question mark. I wonder. You know, they did say they've called in um, that other team to... I'll read you that in a moment. Just go back a few slides. The Will County Major Crimes Task Force has been brought in to assist investigators with gathering evidence and reviewing video. I wonder what video. You know, is it their own surveillance? Is it of the neighborhood? I'm sure they've canvassed that already. But they are working on it. They are working on it. Okay, I believe that he's uh, 38 and she is 32. Let me just quickly go back here because you guys are saying she looks much younger. He's 38 and she's 32. Okay. Uh, this country girl's life says, was anything stolen? They haven't said. They have not specified. Um, very interesting. You know, I don't think that this would be like a burglary to steal things and they shoot everyone. I don't know. This is based on my experience in South Africa where burglaries are... <laughs> they happen so much. Uh, my own house where I grew up as a, a teenager, we got broken into 11 times in one year. So they are as well. They they come in there and clean out everything, but they don't generally kill everyone. Generally. Sometimes, yes, but, you know, you never know. But they haven't said if anything was stolen. Okay. And so that's the number to call. If you know anything, please say something. And then the two children attended R.C. Hill Elementary School. They said one of the children had grown out his hair long and recently cut it to donate for a child's cancer awareness campaign. Shame. I'm just quickly going to zoom in so you could see this. Um, they said a message from Valley View School District 365. Thank you so much, Cammy. They say, Dear Valley view family staff and community and they also translate it um, in spanish they say it's with deep sadness that we inform you about a recent loss to our vvsd school community today on september 18 2023 we were informed that two of our rc hill elementary school students tragically lost their lives in a senseless act of gun violence at their residence in romeoville the Romeoville Police Department, RPD. Official updates can be found online. We have initiated the VVSD crisis response plan to support the RC Hill School community. VVSD has a crisis intervention team made up of professionals trained to support the needs of students, parents, and school personnel at difficult times such as this. In each of our VVSD schools, we have trained professionals, including counselors, social workers, and psychologists who are available for students needing support. This resource provides an overview on what parents and caregivers can do to help their children. So they do have a Helping Your Child with Grief a link there as well. I'll make sure to link um, this message for you in the description box afterwards. Kathleen R said, when I hear dogs are victims, I think the perp is doing it to silence them before unaliving the humans. That's a very good point as well, Kathleen R. I don't even know what dogs they were, but you make a good point. Yep, to stop them from barking, to silence them. It's just terrible. Oh, man. <laughs> Shauna said, I wanted to thank you for the nice message on PayPal. I hope you and little Fury got, Mr. Fury got some goodies. Thank you so much, Shauna. And yes, we did. Thank you very much. Uh, Clarice Starling, is that so? Hello, Clarice. <laughs> Welcome to Grizzly Supporter. Okay, so that is my presentation. And now I've got some clips for you here. So let me put this on for you, which is the press conferences. They had two. Of questions, but as you can imagine, uh, we have a lot of I'm gonna go right, let's just size it nicely and go to the beginning here. This should be good. Okay, hope you can hear it nicely. But as you can imagine, uh, we have a lot of On Sunday, September 17th, at approximately 8.43 p.m., the Romeville Police Department was required, requested to conduct a well being check on the 500 block of Concord Avenue. A member of the family did not show up for work at 6 a.m. on the morning of Sunday, September 17th, and did not respond to phone calls throughout the day, resulting in family members becoming concerned. <clears throat> Upon arrival, officers discovered four deceased individuals with gunshot wounds. The deceased have been identified as Roberto Rolone and Zoraida Bartolome, and two children. Preliminary investigation leads police to believe this happened between 9 p.m. on Saturday and 5 a.m. on Sunday morning. The investigation is still in its early stages. Due to the sensitivity of the case and to maintain the integrity of the investigation, we are not releasing further details. Anyone with information should contact the Romeoville Police Department at 815-886-7219. There will be no further press conferences today. 
all updates will be made via news releases. I will take a couple of questions. Do you believe the shooting happened inside the home? We do. Uh, from one of the family members, or you don't know who's who the shooter is? Are you looking for a shooter? We don't believe that the offender is among the victim right now. So well, it's not a murder-suicide? It is not a murder-suicide. Are there any signs of any break-ins? I know when you all were there, there was a lot of evidence being taken out of the home, even a screen window. Due to the sensitivity of this case, as you can imagine, and to maintain the integrity, of the investigation, we're not releasing any of that information. See, the question was, you know, did, are there signs of a break-in or was anything taken? And they say due to the sensitivity of this investigation, they're not releasing certain information. Due to the time frame that has gone by, more than 18 hours from the time we were contacted, um, we are not asking anybody to shelter in place. We are not actively looking for anybody in the area. But we do always ask our residents to have a good sense of self-awareness and to report anything that they might see as suspicious. Any leads on any suspect? Right now, we are investigating this as a, as a murder. And again, to maintain the integrity of the investigation, we're not releasing any of that information. Were there any animals located inside the home? Some animal control there this morning and they came out shortly after possibly with a couple of items. We did recover three deceased dogs inside the home. Shot to death? They were shot, yes. Was this a husband and wife and their two children? Not, I don't have the information if they were married right now. Okay. But, but it is their children. children who were shot to death? There were two children that were amongst the victims, yes. Boys or girls? We're not going to release that information right okay. now. Again, due to the sensitivity of the case. Okay. Of course, later that was released. So we know it was a husband and wife and two sons. The sons were aged seven and nine and three dogs. But related to the two adults? Related to the two adults. At this time, that's all the questions I can take. You saw the name of the other two victims? Yes. Uh, Roberto, R-O-B-E-R-T-O, Rolon, R-O-L-O-N. Um, his name is, uh, I believe, Alberto. We'll check again. We'll check again. Here we go. I just want to make sure we get the spelling right. So just wait one second. Going forward here quickly. There we go. Alberto Rolon. So Rada Bartolome. Okay. So we'll do that. We'll continue on. And then Zoraida, Z-O-R-A-I-D-A, Bartolome, B-A-R-T-O-L-O-M-E. Good afternoon. So that was two days ago uh, that they released that. And this was now an update from September 19th. Or you can see at the bottom there, which was yesterday. So... Um, this would be the latest press media briefing, press conference, but it's very short. <laughs> it is a press conference. It just feels like it's so short, man. It's like we used to now, you know, this 20, 30 minute press conference. It's just a, a media briefing. And it, this would be the mayor speaking from the village of Romeoville. And so let's watch this clip as well. No, for sure. says, I used to live in Chicago, Aurora. And one silver lining, if there is one, is that everyone in the wider Chicago area has ring cams like everyone so yeah check your ring cams this is mayor john noke of the village of romeoville our entire community is grieving with the family over this tragic incident it is always heartbreaking whenever there is a loss of life but when children are involved it's much more painful i have directed our social services staff to make themselves available to our community to help begin the healing process it is important that we conduct a thorough investigation. I'm just going to pause it there for a second. Mac Pride says, when we're married, you usually have the last name. Usually, but even I don't. You know? I do not have my husband's surname. I'm just saying. It's sometimes, you know, personal choice. 2023. I don't know. It's not always. So <laughs> Nicole is saying the same. Not all married people have the same last name. Even me. <laughs> okay, continuing on. And we have committed our full resources to that task. The victims deserve that. Now I'm going to turn it over to Deputy Chief Byrne, who will give you an update. Thank you, Mayor. This incident is the police department's top priority. All officers and professional staff have been working tirelessly on this case. Our detectives and crime scene investigators have spent the last 36 hours collecting a tremendous amount of physical evidence. We were able to determine that this was not a random incident and there was no cause for a shelter in place order. 
The Will County Major Crimes Task Force has been brought in to assist our investigators with gathering evidence and reviewing video. The members of the community have been very helpful in providing us with information and evidence. We continue to seek their assistance in providing anything, including ring doorbell footage, they may think is helpful to this investigation. I do want to clarify some information about the victims. The four victims are 38-year-old Alberto Rolone, 32-year-old Zoraida Bartolome, and their two male children ages seven and nine. If you have any information, even if you're not sure it's relevant, please contact the Romeville Police Department. Phone number is 815-886-7219. In addition, social services is available at the police department for those in need. We will continue to exhaust every possible resource available, and we will not rest until those responsible for this tragedy are brought to justice. Thank you. Okay, so there's the number. If you have any information, please contact the Romeoville Police Department at 815-886-7219. Now, you know what? Someone just said in chat that NBC says there's a pending press conference, like right now. And then I looked and they say from 20 minutes ago <laughs> that they're going to have one. And I'm like, sorry, what now? So we might actually catch a live press conference. That's going to be interesting. If so, let's just quickly uh, take this uh, clip out, put this up here. That'll be cool if we can catch a live. Imagine if they're like, we have, I don't know, arrested someone. Did you? Or what? So they say live, police to update after family of four and their three dogs found murdered in Romeoville. So, okay, are we ready to listen to this? I'm going to be reading a statement and then I will answer a couple of questions. Within hours of discovering the victims on September 17th, the Romeville Police Department had developed a person of interest. That person of interest is 31-year-old Nathaniel Huey Jr. of Streamwood, Illinois. A second person, a female with a relationship to Huey, was also identified as a person of interest. <clears throat> In the evening hours of September 19th, the female person of interest was reported by family as a missing endangered person out of Streamwood, Illinois and entered into the law enforcement agency's data system. Later that same evening, <clears throat> the Romeville Police Department distributed a statewide bulletin to law enforcement agencies, believing Huey to be a credible suspect in this investigation. Ooh, and we've got the closed captions turned on there. So I hope that you caught that. Are you hearing it properly? I boosted it as much as possible. So the suspect is 31-year-old Nathaniel Huey Jr. and a female, and the way they got on to them was because the female was reported as a missing and endangered person. Whoa. Okay, I'm going to go back a few seconds here. Let's listen. Later that same evening, <clears throat> the Romeville Police Department distributed a statewide bulletin to law enforcement agencies, believing Huey to be a credible suspect in this investigation. This morning, acting on a digital license plate reader alert, the Catoosa, Oklahoma Police Department was alerted to the presence of the suspect vehicle in their jurisdiction. Acting on this alert, local authorities located the vehicle and attempted to conduct a traffic stop. The vehicle immediately attempted to elude the officers, resulting in a single car crash of the suspect vehicle, causing the vehicle to catch on fire. Officers on scene heard two noises believed to be gunshots. A female with a gunshot wound was located and removed from the passenger side of the vehicle and is listed in critical condition. A male, also with a gunshot wound, was located deceased in the driver's seat of the vehicle. This is still an active and evolving investigation, and this portion of the incident is still unfolding. We appreciate the public's cooperation and assistance, and I will take a couple of questions. Whoa, I just got to pause it there. Oh my word. So, Catoosa, is that the area? Is that in Oklahoma? For anyone here? What? So they're actually located via a digital license plate reader, the car. Followed it. And they had a, there was a single car crash. And then the, the car, what, burst into, is, did I hear that right? I've got to listen again. I'm like, well, my brain is just like, sorry, what? Burst, burst into flame? But they heard two gunshots. The male deceased, the female in critical condition. What in the hell is this all about? Dina, thank you so much. I really appreciate 
your sticker. Um, I'm not sure. They don't say the, the age of the female. You say it's the female under age. Yeah, Irene says car crash followed by shooting. This is this is a lot. Wow. Do you know why these two may have had the designs of this family? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Do we know what the motive may be in this case? We have developed, evidence has shown us uh, a nexus between our suspect and the victims, as well as a possible motive. Can you share that with us? Not at this time. This is still an active uh, investigation with a sensitivity to it. So the main suspect is, is dead? The person of interest, I should say? The Catusa, Oklahoma Police Department and the Oklahoma State Police are still conducting an investigation. This literally just happened um, very recently. Um, so until the conclusion of their investigation and notification of family, we have not made any, made any identifications yet. So that's right now you interesting so we can't assume that it's the person of interest with the female in the vehicle although they were tracking a digital the, the license plate with a digital reader well, you can kind of put two and two together however i mean it could be another male but that's that's hectic wow joe ellie says yeah i'm getting in the og lane now thank you so much joe ellie sure Okay, we're going to go back a little bit after this just to listen to that one portion again. So that car that you were searching for, the license plate, is what was pulled over and led to those events? Correct. Well, weapons were found at the scene uh, other than the weapon used to uh, inflict the two gunshot wounds. This is still an active, ongoing investigation, and we uh, are not releasing that information at this time. I'm sorry, you said Catusa, Oklahoma? I believe it is Catusa, yes, Catusa, it? Oklahoma. Uh, C A T O O S A. Katusa. I'll look up how that is. Nothing uh, in our investigation to this point leads us to believe that there are any other suspects. I'm going to be reading this. Okay, we're going to just look at that little portion there in the beginning one more time just so we can wrap our minds around that. Um, Barbara George says major applause to the police. Yes, sadly. This doesn't feel like justice. I mean, they're not, we don't know. They have to still identify the male who was found deceased and the females in critical condition. Okay, so I'll respect that. Ugh, Katusa, all the way there. Uh, Dina, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. So quickly, before I relook at this, let's just quickly go on the map here. And I just want to type in Katusa, Oklahoma. Glad he spelt it for me. Whoa, that's pretty damn far. Okay, so I'm going to go from the home. 664 miles. What? What a case. I mean, we're definitely going to be following closely to figure out what the heck happened here. And what is this nexus, you know, that they say connects um, the victims to this guy or these people. And Eliza says, I wonder if this young lady was kidnapped. I wonder too. He definitely sounds like, they said, a person of interest. And there was a female with him. So we don't know under what circumstances either. That is very scary. Wow. Okay. So that's how far away they, they found the car with a digital license plate reader. Tried to stop the car. There was a car crash. And then they heard two gunshots and the male was found deceased and the female is in critical condition. Yeah, April B12 says KC white virus. <laughs> I was wondering if anyone's going to say that because I was like, whoa, that just reminds me of, yeah, Vicky and KC white. If you've never heard of that case, I do have a playlist. You can check that out. Wow. And Heather says need to check uh, the route for other crimes. Yes, that too. I mean, what on earth would that be? A targeted attack. What? What an outcome. So let's just quickly just listen to this beginning part again here. Within hours of discovering the victims on September 17th, the Romeville Police Department had developed a person of interest. That person of interest is 31-year-old Nathaniel Huey Jr. of Streamwood, Illinois. 31-year-old Nathaniel Huey Jr. of Streamwood, Illinois. So he is from Illinois. Now, how far is Streamwood, Illinois? Sorry, I've got lots of curiosities. I'm sure you do too. So let's look at it together. Streamwood, Illinois. So I'm just going to 
Oh, it's not far at all. Okay, wait a minute. Let's take Katusa out here. Interesting. And the lady worked in Lombard. And the male worked in Aurora. Shame. And that was all the way up there in Streamwood, Illinois. So he's from this area. And they used to live in, let's quickly look at that area again, Westmont, which is down here. So I'm just, I was just looking at location wise. So they, the couple used to live here, the family, husband, wife, two kids, three dogs. They used to live here. They moved south here. Um, the wife worked in Lombard and the husband in Aurora. And this person of interest is from Streamwood, Illinois. And then they were all the way in Catoosa? What? Okay, let's listen again. A second person, a female with a relationship to Huey, was also identified as a person of interest. <clears throat> in the evening hours of September 19th, the female person of interest was reported by family as a missing endangered person out of Streamwood, Illinois, and entered into the law enforcement agency's data system. See, missing endangered person, why, why? Could it be a juvenile female? Or why is it missing and endangered? I mean, whoa, what this guy sounded like quite the loose cannon. Huh? Nathaniel Huey Jr. I'm looking on Facebook while we're busy here listening to this. Later that same evening, <clears throat> the Romeville Police Department distributed a statewide bulletin to law enforcement agencies, believing Huey to be a credible suspect in this investigation. This morning, Acting on a digital license plate reader alert, the Catoosa, Oklahoma Police Department was alerted to the presence of the suspect vehicle in their jurisdiction. Acting on this alert, local authorities located the vehicle and attempted to conduct a traffic stop. The vehicle immediately attempted to elude the officers, resulting in a single car crash of the suspect vehicle, causing the vehicle to catch on fire. Okay, so the catch on fire part, I was like, did I really hear that? Yep. They just wanted to do a traffic stop. This sounds very hectic. Officers on scene heard two noises believed to be gunshots. A female with a gunshot wound was located and removed from the passenger side of the vehicle and is listed in critical condition. A male... I'm just going to pause and say, oh man, to that female's family. How absolutely devastating. They reported her missing and endangered. And now she's in critical condition after being shot by what sounds like this maniac. Also with a gunshot wound, was located deceased in the driver's seat of the vehicle. This is still an active and evolving investigation, and this portion of the incident is still unfolding. We appreciate the public's cooperation and assistance, and I will take a couple of questions. Okay. Thank you so much, uh... Eliza, you say, Katusa, Oklahoma, two people have been taken to the hospital after a police chase ended in a fiery crash on the I-44 near Hard Rock Casino near Katusa. Whoa, so now I found a little thing on Facebook here. Let's just put this over here. I'm just going to close that. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who sent me links. Okay, now let's see what on earth they are saying here. Romeoville Police Department. Okay, I'm reading this for the first time with you. Nathaniel Huey Jr. is a suspect of a quadruple murder in which an entire family, including two children and three dogs, were executed by firearm. Nathaniel is said to have extensive firearm training and experience and has been pictured with assault rifles. He's aware that police are investigating him for this offense and his behavior has become irrational and erratic. Nathaniel stopped going to work, has driven recklessly to follow police involved in the investigation and his whereabouts are now unknown obviously now there's an update i'm just sharing this from when i typed in his name then i found this right okay thank you so much uh, mac pride said she was 50 years old irma linda paloma sure so they say at this time probable cause to arrest nathaniel for any offense related to this investigation does not exist and no action should be taken based on this bulletin anyone having contact with nathaniel should exercise extreme caution nathaniel c huey huey jr wow they just put his address on here <laughs> streamwood illinois and that's a 2017 gmc envoy 
with the Illinois registration DW90037 that he was obviously driving. Whoa, that's quite something, huh? Uh, let me just quickly check if I've missed anything. Heather said Catoosa is a city in Rogers and Wagner counties in the U.S. state of Oklahoma. Thank you so much. Uh, Northern Illinois Sasquatch researchers, Edget said, corrected two people of interest. Police in Oklahoma ID'd, uh, I ID'd? Car chase, gunshot, a woman apparently killed by a man. Car caught fire, man died. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so I'm just going to just let's just see what on earth is going on here. Oh, here. Update. Miss Paloma has been located at the request of the Streamwood Police. The Illinois State Police is activating an endangered missing person advisory. The Streamwood Police have confirmed a person is missing based on suspicious circumstances and are looking for public assistance in locating the missing person. At 4 p.m. on September 19th, 2023, Irma Linda Palomo, a 50-year-old female with brown hair and brown eyes, left her residence with Nathaniel C. Huey, a 32-year-old black male. Irma Linda was wearing blue turquoise glasses, a brown plaid shirt, olive green jacket, light blue jeans, and white Nike shoes. She was last seen at 821 Sumac Drive, Streamwood, Illinois. That's his address. The two people are traveling in a black 2017 GMC Yukon SUV with Illinois license plate numbers. If anyone has information regarding the whereabouts of these people, they should contact the Streamwood Police Department. So this was update. Miss Paloma has been located. And of course, they say in critical condition. Wow. And that's all we could find when we type in Nathaniel Huey on Facebook. That was a, I did not expect an update today as well. There was a press conference uh, yesterday and one the day before. And now this is a huge update. Thank you for being live here with me as we go through this. I mean, this is absolutely shocking. Mermaid Danielle says, uh, in her 50s, apparently 50 years old. I haven't seen that myself here, but um, Mac Pride in chat was saying she's 50 years old. Uh, Miss Paloma. Let's just see your name again. How to spell it. Okay, wait, wait one second. Er Melinda. Er Melinda. Okay, I hope she'll be okay. Paloma. Um, even to say what happened, right? Okay, I'm just quickly going to put this, uh, leave this GoFundMe here with you so you can see it. While I just want to search, I don't want to put up someone's name, you know. Sometimes when you search things, you'll see people who are not the person. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Irma Linda Palomo. Yeah, there's quite a few photos, but of course it's of family members as well. That's what I mean. I'm being careful. I don't want to show everyone, you know. Sure. What a shocking update. So if you want to donate to the GoFundMe for funeral aid for the family, um, I will put this link in the description box for you. Now I'm going to have to go and process all of this because that I did not expect at all. I'm like, what, what, what? And it still could be. What do you think it is? Like, what do you think this is about? Do you think it's revenge? Do you think it's stalking and obsession with, you know, did he have an obsession? Maybe with the, the wife or what is it? What do you think it is? Why would they do this? We don't know. Okay, no victim blaming. When asked these questions, not to invite any victim blaming. Like, I think it's because, no, no. <laughs> wow. So I don't know what kind of job he does we're gonna have to deep dive a little bit more and i'm sure they'll update us as well but he the, the male in the vehicle is deceased so they haven't yet identified him officially but wow yes um magnetic janet said i heard from news family had a bankruptcy in 2019 possible connection we did go over that as well in my little um presentation that they did it was for student loans that it was twenty six thousand dollars for student loans Uh, Carol C said just googled Nathaniel Huey and when they found the car the man was dead of gunshot too yeah the man was dead from the gunshot wound they haven't said it is him one could one could speculate it's probably him the likelihood of it being him is very high but they haven't yet notified the family and um, identified that it was him but the the female in the car was shot too and in, is in critical condition at the hospital Okay, so Northern Illinois Sasquatch said suspects have died. Police chase in Oklahoma. Wow. Well, we'll have to see if there's updates. Uh, that was just 20 minutes ago or so, that live uh, 
We missed the live press conference, but we're about five minutes later. We watched it together twice, actually. So I hope that if you're only joining the stream now, I hope that you'll go back to the beginning and hear the whole story to see the timeline and the area and where this unfolded and what happened. I'm so sorry for the family of the victims. This is absolutely terrible. Uh, yeah, uh, Fong Pit said, my first question, why did they move? I mean, it could just be work related, but yes, the fact that they moved, they just bought their first house in April. Wow, how sad. So I'm just going to show you just uh, quickly. Wait, it's not this one. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Took myself off for a second there. I just want to show you a picture of the family again in case you guys missed it. Here we go. Shame. The victims, Alberto Rolon, 38. Zoreda Bartolome, 32. Two sons. Um, the family actually says on the GoFundMe, age 7 and 10. Most of the articles say 7 and 9. Shame. And three dogs as well, which were also shot. Whoa. So, still, if you have any information, the contact uh, number is 815-886-7219. If you saw anything, if you know anything, especially now that the persons of interest were identified and they, were, they chased them down and there was a car crash and all of that, still, if you know anything, please contact the police. You just don't know if your, your tip could actually help. Linda Wolf said, thank you again for sharing um, all of this information with us. So very sad. Very, very sad. What a terrible loss for this family. And also for um, Irma Linda, for her family as well. They must be, you know, so shocked, like missing and endangered and now in critical condition at the hospital. So I will keep you guys posted if there's any more updates in this case. And of course, many others. I follow lots of cases and you guys definitely send me lots of suggestions on grizzly crime at gmail.com. Thank you so much, Mars, for everything you do. Thank you to all my patrons. Hope that you enjoy the clips that I put up there for you today of Iceland. And also thank you to all my members. We'll have a members only stream again soon. We had one recently from Iceland, if you remember. If you haven't seen it, you only became a member today, check out the members only playlist. You can see the two live streams I did there in Iceland. And um, thank you to everyone who's new today. Make sure you are subscribed, hit the bell, make sure it's set to all. You basically now with YouTube, it's, it's not a red button, it's a white button. You click subscribe, click it again, and set it to all. That's how you do it. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, because sometimes people literally email me and ask me how to do it. Subscribing is completely free. Welcome to the community. I never expect anyone to be a member or a patron or anything. I just, I really appreciate it when you are. Thank you for the coffees and the PayPal's and all the ways you support me so that I can do this full time and give you guys my full energy. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And I will see you all again very soon. Stay safe and please leave kind comments uh, to the family and friends of this beautiful family who was just bought a home and was starting their life and they were tragically murdered. It's just terrible. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next one, which will be soon. Bye.